who was Jehoram, inherited the throne. Meanwhile, Jezebel continued to exercise her evil influence in the court. At that point, a crisis developed in Israel. Jehoram, with the convenience, with the connivance of old Jezebel, continued to promote heathen cults and lead his countrymen to apostasy. Those trying to remain loyal to the Lord grew increasingly impatient with the, right, with the high-handed ways of the royal family. Resentment, which had been smoldering for years, was ready to burst into the flame of revolt. Old Elijah had passed on the mantle of prophetic leadership to Elisha. Elisha, like Elijah, knew that kings and countries had to be accountable to the Lord. He also recognized the arrogance of power shown by Jehoram. With a rock-hard sense of trust in the ways of God, Elisha became the mastermind of a coup. The timing was perfect. Jehoram led his hands, Jehoram, who then was leading, had his hands full with unrest and uprisings and outlaying parts of the overstretched kingdom he had inherited. Elisha arranged to have Jehu, a commander of the Israelite forces, renowned for his devotion to the Lord, anointed. Yet the prophet and Jehu alike understood that it was really God who was doing the anointing. What followed was one of the most dramatic scenes in the Bible. Jehu, who received the popular support of fellow officers, dashed to Jezreel to confront Jehoram before Jehoram learned of the coup. In Jezreel, the place where Ahab had seized Naboth's vineyard, God settled the account against Ahab and his disgusting dynasty when Jehu slew Jehoram. Jezreel served to, remain, to remind everyone from then on that the Lord remembers and continues to direct history.